Sometimes, life is full of little miracles, even the smallest of miracles which go unnoticed, such as the miracle of photosynthesis. These little miracles of life may be explained by the laws of nature, but they are nonetheless, in a very real sense, miracles. Plants harvest light with near perfect efficiency, but this is impossible under classical physics. Along the way to the photosynthesizing core, photons of light should collide with other particles, but they don't. A photon reaching the core is as likely to succeed as you sprinting blindfolded through a dense forest, reaching the center without striking a single tree. Plants are engaged in a kind of miracle. The plant puts the photon into a state of quantum superposition, multiplying it by every route that photon could possibly take. Imagine blindly sprinting through a forest, being multiplied into every one of the billions of possible paths. If any one of your possibilities were observed hitting a tree, the superposition would collapse, and that would be your final outcome. But the plant patiently refuses to observe any of these casualties, while at its heart it continues to sing, Let there be light. 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 When any of the possibilities finally reaches the core without fail, only that winner is observed. All the other possibilities disappear. The winner is transmitted back through time, from the future, and becomes the only possibility that ever existed. This is how photons reach the plant's core with impossible precision. This is how you and every organism in existence overcame the massive improbabilities of life. However, life's little miracles are not only contained to tiny photons, hitting molecules of chlorophyll to impossible precision. For the same laws that govern the photon apply to everything else. Just as the photon's trajectory is directed in the unlikeliest of manners in the humble cell of a plant, so too can this miracle of nature alter the trajectory of any other projectile. Certain inequalities are known to exist within the laws of physics that guarantee that this principle of quantum superposition applies not only to the microscopic, but to all scales, even those upon which the affairs of men are conducted. And the same quantum computation, which miraculously guides the path of the photon past the cellular obstacles, can appear anywhere an entangled system appears. But in nature, entanglement is everywhere. As our most cutting edge of physics tells us, space-time itself even emerges from entanglements beyond the universe. In fact, at the largest scale, the grand architecture of the universe itself is literally constructed by the ultimate entangled system, the universal wave function. And as posited by popular theories of the mind, entanglement is identified with consciousness. Even in the case of this grand architect of space-time itself. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. But every so often, just as the trajectory of the photon is miraculously guided along its path, this conscious and intelligent mind, who guides the hand of providence, interferes in the affairs of men, refusing to observe any other outcome and causing the unlikeliest of occurrences to guide the destiny of nations. Until finally you hit 
cosmic consciousness. Some consciousness that's ethereal, that envelops the universe, which looks at us and says, aha, the cat is alive. Be it freak weather saving the Continental Army from certain doom, an impossibly timed drop in temperature, halting Hitler's eastern advance. Identifying that one timeline in a million that defeats Thanos. Or even quantum computing that one branch of Hilbert space among a billion, in which a man's head turns at just the right moment by a mere centimeter to cause an assassin's bullet, just like the photon in the cell of a plant, to clip his ear rather than hit his head thereby bringing the deep state crashing to the ground. Take a look what happened. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. The force is with me. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. And I saw Trump rising up, and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that w the, this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum, eardrum. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. Did that happen? Pardon my stealing a film line. The Force is with us. But one with the Force, and the Force is with me. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of superintending providence in our favor. To that kind of providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity. And have now we forgotten that powerful friend? And the powerful point is, there was blood pouring everywhere, and yet, in a certain way, I felt very safe because I had God on my side. I felt that. They were raising up these torches that looked like fire, and they were bringing forth a new patriotism upon the nation. And it was coming, it was being birthed, and it just kept spreading like fire all throughout America. I have lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? Instantly the dark cloud rolled back, together with the armies it had brought, leaving the inhabitants of the land victorious, while the bright angel cried with a loud voice, while the stars remain and the heavens send down dew upon the earth, so long shall the Union last. The scene instantly began to fade and dissolve, and I found myself once more gazing upon the mysterious visitor, who in the same voice I had heard before said, Son of the Republic, what you have seen is thus interpreted. Many will come upon the Republic, but the whole world united shall not prevail against her. 
Let every child of the Republic learn to live for his God, his land, and union. With these words, the vision vanished, wherein had been shown me the birth, the progress, and the destiny of the United States. <laughs>